You are using Shatsy and UI the wrong way. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at these websites. They all look beautiful, everything is clean, they are completely accessible, but you see, they all have one thing in common. They literally look the same. Same padding, same cards, same shadows, same everything. What's the problem? Well, they all use Shatsy and UI. We had this exact problem with Bootstrap. Every website looked the same and felt the same. But what makes Shatsy and UI different from Bootstrap? Well, it's fundamentally designed to be customized and modded by you. But most people don't do it or do it the wrong way. Therefore, let me show you how to do it the right way. How to take this design and turn it into this beautiful website with a custom theme and customized components without breaking any sweat. So what you have to understand first of all is that Shatsy and UI fundamentally isn't a component library. It's quite the opposite. It helps you build your own component library. So let's take a few steps back. I think you all know what MUI is. It's a component library which is pretty much the OG and it's older than me. No, I'm joking. And if you go to the documentation, you'll see that using this component is relatively simple. You install it, then you import it, you render it. And if you want to customize it, then you use the SX property. You also have the options property, disable portal, render input. But in general, you customize this component using your props. And also the code is abstracted, meaning the code is stored in the node modules folder. Because if you, for example, go to the source, you'll see this is the source for your actual component. It isn't one file, it isn't one function, but it is one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, seven files create this one component. That's fine. But you see the problem? You don't really own the component. You don't really use the code. It's abstracted for you in the node modules. Shatsy and UI takes a different route. So if you go to the documentation and open the button component, you'll see this is first of all the button. It looks nice. We have a hover state. It's styled. But if you go to the actual code, which you see right here, you'll see Hmm, here's nothing specific to Shatsy and UI, and this is only one function, that's it. So you use a component, which is imported from Radix UI, and then Shatsy and UI styles this one component by Radix UI, and voila, you're finished. So if you didn't know, Shatsy and UI uses Radix UI primitives in the background. These are components which are accessible and they are not styled. This means if you would use them natively, they wouldn't look nice. And the nice thing is that Shatsy and UI brings good fundamentals, if you understand what I mean. You have your variants, default, destructive, you have your sizes, your default variants. It's built in a way that you have a starting point and that you can then customize mod even further to your liking. So right here, for example, I created my own little demo website. So we have a login link, first of all, this is our login card, and then we also have our dashboard. To create all of this, I just used the default shared CN components, and I also used the default shared CN blocks. So right here, if you go to the block, you'll find first of all this featured dashboard and then also this login page. And as you also see, the theme is exactly the same as you'll find in the shared CN website. And that's a huge problem because it literally looks the same to any other shared CN website. So how do you get started? with customizing this website. So you want to start with the globals.css file. In the globals.css file, you have all of your default styles already defined. So in this case, we have our radius, our foreground color, our card color, card foreground color, and stuff like that. So for example, let's again go back to our login page. Right here we have our card. This card has a quite big rounding, maybe too big. So how about we change it? For that, again, we go to our globals file, then we have our root, the root applies to everything, and here we have our radius, 0.6 rem. So let's change it to 0 rem, why not? Let's again save it, let's go back 
And yes, this is already way better. Now we have a smaller rounding and this applies globally. Our card has a smaller rounding, our input has a smaller rounding, or in other words, no rounding. Our buttons have no rounding. If I go to my dashboard, right here again, no rounding. So we just updated our rounding globally only with this one change. So you see, this is the nice thing with shared C and UI. You can already customize a lot only with the globals file and in this case with the theme. Because first of all, you define your root. Your root pretty much applies to everything. Then you have a dark class. This applies to everything that is in dark mode. And then you have your theme inline and here you define all of your CSS variables. So before we now completely customize our theme from the ground up, we have to first of all look at how you even update a color. So right here we have our background CSS variable. And as you see, we define the color with OKLCH. OKLCH is the next evolution from HSL. And the biggest benefit is that it's a easier to read, 100, and it also creates better colors. So how exactly does it work? Well, right here I have a little diagram. And as you see, it pretty much consists of three variables. We have L, C, H. L stands for perceived lightness. This means this component defines how light or dark a color appears to the human eye. It typically ranges from zero black to one, which is white or 0% to 100%. So in this case, 0.55 would be a relatively gray color because it's right in between black and white. Then we have our second variable. This is our chroma, C. This represents the amount or intensity of the color similar to saturation. A value of zero means gray, while a higher value indicates a more vivid color. So the higher the values, the more of a saturated color you will have. In this case, this will be a relative gray color because this is pretty much zero. And then we have our third variable and this is our hue. So this is the actual color represented as an angle on the color wheel. So zero to 360 degrees. So right here you already see the color wheel, zero degrees or zero to 20 degrees. This is about red, 180 degrees. That's around green to bluish. And then 200 degrees, this is blue and about 300 degrees, this is purple. So this is how you create colors with with OKLCH. So in this case, this color 0.55, 0 0.02, 260 degrees would be something between blue and gray. So we can also update our own color. So for example, in our dark class, we have the primary CSS variable. If you go to the button component, you'll see this is what we use in our default variant. This is how we style our background color, BG primary. This means we call this CSS variable. And currently we have a value of 0.900. This means we have a relatively white color. It's not completely white, but it's almost white. We also don't have any hue or saturation. This means if I go back, you see, yeah, it's relatively white. Let's maybe update it to a blue color. So we can first of all update our L variable. So let's say 0.54. Then we can also update our chroma. This will be 0.24. It shouldn't be too saturated. And for the color, I want to have a blue color and this will be around 260 degrees. So if I can go back, we now have this blue color. As you see, it's super easy to customize my your chat C and theme. And now I want to update my theme globally. I want to update everything. Now you can do it manually. That's fine. I just showed you how it works, but this takes a lot of time because you have a lot of CSS variables. Therefore, a built-in solution would make a lot of sense. So chat C and UI has its own theme library. The thing is, this only changes the colors. It does not change the width. It does not change the button height. It does not change the font, only the color. This is not enough. Therefore, I will recommend a different library. And this is called Tweak CN. And this helps you design your perfect chat C and UI theme with ease. So here we can click on try it now. And here we have already our playground. So I, for example, am a big fan of the Claude theme. So as you see, it's very similar to standard Claude. But the thing is, you know, I don't like this rounding. I don't like the font. I want to customize it even further. So I will leave the colors as is because if I go to light mode, yeah, in light mode, it looks nice. In dark mode, it looks nice. But for the typography, I want to, for example, use Geist Mono. This is already better. But the letter spacing is not big enough. So let's maybe update the letter spacing to create a bigger width. Okay, this is already better. Then we can update even more things. So if I go to other, I can update 
rotate the radius. This is a bit too rounded for my liking. I want to have it at 0.1 RAM. So if I save it, yeah, you know what? This looks quite nice. Then for the spacing, yeah, I think this is fine enough. And then we can also update our shadow. So if I go to light mode, let's see, shadow opacity, yeah, this is fine. Blur radius, yeah, this is fine. For the spread, this is too much. Let's make it a bit less. And yeah, I think this is relatively finished. So now we have a new theme. We updated the radius, we updated the typography, we updated our shadow and everything looks great. This is already a big change. So now we can also use it. So we can click on code, let's copy it. And we want to now delete our dark class, our root class and our theme inline class. Let's delete everything and let's paste what I just copied. So if I save this and again go back to our example, you will see a big difference. So our rounding is gone. We have a new theme. If I go to login, this looks completely different. If I go to the dashboard, this is also a completely different dashboard. So for some people, this customization might be already enough because I mean, the theme is different, the border radius is different, the shadows are different. But you know what? For example, if I go to the index page again, I have my theme toggle right here. This has no rounding and that's because my border radius globally is zero. But for my theme toggle and you know what, for any button that has the outline variant, I want to have a rounding of full. How do you update this? Well, most people would now go to the theme toggle component to the button and add a class name of rounded full. If I again go back, you now see yeah, the theme toggle has a rounding of full. This is great. But my buttons don't have a rounding of full. That's fine because they have a default variant. But if I go to the page.tsx and add a variant of outline and again go back, you'll see we have an outline variant, but the border radius hasn't changed. So most people would now again go right here and add a class name of rounded full. That's stupid. Too much code. We can update it globally. Again, this is chat and UI. This isn't MUI. You literally have the code right here. So this, for example, is the button component which lives in my components and it's structured in a very simple way. First of all, we have our global styles. This means these styles apply to all variants. It does not matter if you selected the default variant or the outline variant, it's applied to every variant. And inside of here, we pretty much style the basics. We add the text size, the height, the width, the padding and stuff like that. And then with the variants, we customize the global styles even further. So I, for example, want to update my outline variant. Currently, we change right here the background color, the shadow and stuff like that. But I want to also say, hey, outline or the variant should be rounded or full. And I add this question mark at the start to not collide with this default rounded MD. And if I again go back, you'll see every variant of outline will now have a rounding or full. So if I go to the dashboard and zoom out a bit, you'll see that these buttons have a variant of outline, which means they also have a rounding or full. This is already a nice change. Let's again go back Back, we can now also add our own variant. So I could add a off buttons variant and this will be equal to these styles. So when I call or when I use this variant, I want to have a hover animation first of all. Then I want to have my BG of primary, text primary, shadow XS, and then I want to also have a rounding of full. This means if I go back to my page.tsx and update the variant to off buttons, you'll see if I hover over login, we have the scale animation. And this only applies to the buttons where I use this variant. So you see, it's super easy to update your components. You want to never create separate components. You want to update your theme or your component right in the component. I know this kind of makes sense, but most people don't do it, which is weird. We can also update our size. So I want to have a size of huge and this will be, for example, height of 12. Then you don't want to add a rounding inside of here. You want to always add a rounding in your actual variant. And I think this is fine enough. So if I again go back to my page.tsx, let's add a size and this will be huge. So if I again go back, you see, yes, this looks very nice. So let's maybe also update our dropdown. So here we have our theme toggle with my dropdown and this looks very chatsy and UI like. I don't want that. So let's open, for example, the dropdown menu component. This is already a bit more 
a bit more code because we have a few more functions, but it's not complicated. So we have our drop down menu content, our trigger, our menu content and stuff like that. What do I want to update? I want to update my drop down menu item. So light, dark and system. Currently we have this accent background color, which is fine, but I want to have my primary background color. So if I go back right here, we have our drop down menu item and then we have the focus of BG accent. Let's change to BG primary and the opacity of 80% and then for the focus text we will say text primary foreground. This means if I again go back you'll see instead of having this accent color we now have this nice looking primary color. Let's maybe also give it a bit of rounding. So instead of using rounded of SM we will say rounded full. So if I again go back we now have full rounding. This does not look very nice but it works. So as you see, customizing your components is not hard. It's very easy. You literally have the source code right in your components. Chat C and UI is just a wrapper around Radix UI. That's it. It only adds CSS and it builds or it creates good fundamentals on which you can build your own design system. Now, if you want to completely customize it, I would also customize the global style. So I would update the text size, the font weight, the padding, the margin to make it less Shad CN like. In my opinion, Shad CN has good defaults and therefore I don't really like to update the globals. The theme and simple component updates are enough for me. And also, if you want to know what websites use Shad CN UI, well then first of all, we have my website, Marshall Code. As you see, this is still very Shad CN UI heavy and that's because I haven't really customized it but I will do so soon. Then we, for example, have zero.email. Zero.email also uses Shad C and UI. And then we have cal.com and cal.com also uses Shad C and UI. So as you see, this is a very powerful library. Also Nizzy, what the hell is this, but okay. And now I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you could learn something new. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and my heart. So please do it. And now enjoy your day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.